All right, so we know that President Biden and his agenda are in total free fall in any, any poll, really, it's an array of polls, but there's a reason behind that that I don't think is examined close enough. Well, now there's a poll that sheds light on this and, and even issues that the media always seems to get wrong, maybe sometimes on purpose. I want to bring in the, from the Bonson Group, David Bonson, uh, and, and in studio, my old friend Liz Peek. I haven't seen her in so long. So uh, Grinnell College, it's a college founded in 1846. It's a liberal arts college, in fact, considered to be one of the best in the nation. They put out these polls, and they're really fantastic. This most recent one, I'm looking through the data, and I got to tell you, I couldn't think of two better people I wanted to talk to this about. So first, let's go over some things that really stood out to me. 52% believe American democracy facing a major threat. Liz, what are your thoughts on something like that? Well, first of all, I think it's interesting to note that Republicans think that more than Democrats. A year ago, probably the opposite right. would have been true. So this topic, like everything else, has an incredible partisan divide. But for Republicans, obviously, a lot of people think that the 2020 election did not go according to plan, in part because of possibly fraud, but more importantly, maybe rules changes that the Democrats shoved through at the last minute. Uh, and we hear things like Mark Zuckerberg spending $419 million to influence supposedly nonpartisan election officials. I think those things, plus uh, the abridgment of personal freedoms, uh, yeah. Charles, the number one freedom in this country is freedom of speech. Uh, Cato did a study, 62% of people don't think they can voice their real opinions because they'll be you know, deplatformed right. or something. And if that goes, and many thing. people say that that's, that's right. democracy goes hand that's in hand right. with that. I will say, though, David, uh, on this independence, a, 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 a plurality of independents, almost 50 percent also agree that there's a major threat to democracy. So we know we always know to, to, to Liz's point, you know, depends who in the White, who's in the White House, how that kind of flip flops of Republicans and Democrats. But independents are concerned as well. Well, and that's sort of the problem is you wonder if people are answering based on their belief about the actual ideology of democracy, the, the sort of philosophy that the country is built around is under threat, or do they believe our execution of it right now, the way in which it is practically being applied is under threat. And I think those are two different things and, and people may answer in different ways. You're right, though, the independence feeling that way speaks to the uncertainty in the country. Um, I would add to Liz's point, you have the free speech issues that we all talk about a lot and we are rightly very concerned about. The freedom of religion aspect is becoming an even bigger problem. Mm -hmm. We saw that throughout COVID when churches were shut down and strip clubs were allowed to open and things like that. Now, that's a sort of extreme example, but it really happened a lot. Yeah. But there's attack on free religion all of the time, and it's, it's bundled with the attack on free speech. Those things threaten democracy just as much as these other things. Now, according to the poll, only 7% of Americans have high trust in the federal government. Nurses, doctors scientists, they get the most on the other side. So David, my question is, uh, only 7% high trust in the government, is that number too high? <laughs> yeah, you know what, Charles? I think it, that number is perfect because I think 5% of America works for the government. And so, amen. The, the, those numbers coincide basically right about the level of people who get a check from the government. Um, obviously, there's no one in the private sector who is even a little bit societally engaged who would say the institution I have great confidence in is some aspect of the government, it, not just because of political or ideological distrust, but just because of basic efficiency and competence. Right. So let me get to another one. When I saw this one, I, I really, I mean, it, it made me thrill. It thrilled me so much. It was under the banner of the statement, what people should be free to do. You want to know what's number one? Become wealthy. This ad's now speaking your mind. I, Liz, become wealthy. Would you even imagine this? If you sat down and you watched television all day long, if you went to the movies and caught 10 of the latest movies from Hollywood, would you even imagine that the number one thing that Americans say they should be free to do is to become wealthy? It, you know, David, I mean, it, Charles, that is exactly why people are not on board with this whole tax the wealthy thing. Yes, it polls well up until the point where everyone says, well, wait a minute, I might be the person who becomes wealthy and then I don't want to be taxed like <laughs> right. that. So it, it, when you ask immigrants, why did they come to the United States? It is partly because they want to be able to follow their ambitions and accrue wealth. But actually, the number one thing always is freedom, because a lot of people have come from countries and states where they are not free to choose their own religion, to David's point, profession, et cetera, religion and the opportunity. That's what the big it thing really is. It really is amazing, country. isn't it? I yeah. mean, David, it's, it's just, 
you know, just the idea. And again, I don't even think it's wealthy in the sense of uh, Jeff Bezos, right? Uh, it's just like, hey, greater wealth than my parents had, enough to make sure that my kids get a good start in life. Charles, when I uh, began studying the uh, world of economics to inform my profession, one of the things I could not believe is how dishonest the numbers are about the gap between the wealthy and the poor. The poorest and the wealthiest, there is a big gap. But what they never tell you is that it's not the same people at the bottom. Right. That there are people that are climbing that ladder, so they're comparing the um, numbers to numbers, but not people to people. Right. Because in our country, we have the ability to do two things, to go from poor to richer, and we also have the ability to go from richer to poorer. People can make bad decisions. People can come do down the ladder. That risk-reward society is part of what Liz is talking about, the aspirational nature of our republic. And there's nothing I believe in or get more animated about than that subject. David, Liz, uh, there are so many more fun things in there. I, I hope everyone reads this thing. In the meantime, thank you both very much. Like I said, I could not find two better people to talk to about that.